Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new year, 2022's here, and let's hope we can put the chaos of the last couple of years behind us as we storm forward into this year. Now this video is a little bit related to the last video I did, uh, the testy test off with David Savory just before Christmas, uh, in the sense that I've got a old tester here, and it's a lot older than the oldest tester I had in that video. Here it is, the Mega Insulation Tester Series 3. You might have seen one of these, kind of a bit of a Bakelite thing. This is quite old. Um, it's given to me by an anniversary, by my wife as an anniversary gift. I don't, I don't wives give the best gifts, so it's like really thoughtful history wrapped up in electrical testing stuff, perfect for me. And I've been wanting to make a video for a while about it. So here we are, um, calibration due. I'll give you an idea here. So England were the world football champions at the time, and we still hadn't been to the moon if, if we've been to the moon have we been to the moon Shall we? yeah we've been to the moon haven't we that lets you know how old this thing was at least when it was last calibrated what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to bring the camera in a bit of a closer look see we'll uh, get to the ins and outs of it how it works and stuff and i'll bring my latest calibrated multifunction tester up here and we'll not test off with it but we'll uh, see how it compares okay so here she blows and before we start i have obviously put a little bit of a just a cloth down on the on the bench because this this old bench is um seen all kind of battles and wars and stuff and i just uh, just a little bit of protection for it i just put, I put this down uh, also you might hear a slight humming in the background that's the the, the heater over there and that's because um, when i first came out here about an hour ago, it was quite cold, and it's uh, what is it? You can see the temperature there is 17.2 uh, degrees. Uh, you can see also at the bottom it says that its highest was 32.1 degrees. Well, that was I can tell you that was last July 2021 during a heat wave, and that minus two was last night. So, yeah, I've got the heater on, uh, that's the noise. So, let's have a look at some of the writing we've got. Evershed and Vignoles Limited, Acton Lane Works, you can see that there, Chiswick London W4 on the right, we've got Mega, you can just see, Trademark, Insulation Tester, Series 3, Made in England and a patent number and stuff. Uh, if I bring it even closer, you can see we've got some scale here, we've got, I'll have to spin it this way, you've got Mega Ohm, you've got 1000 Ohm, and then a 250 volt wire, and then spin it back this way. And you can see we've got uh, zero wrote down there all the way up to here we've got one mega ohm two three four five ten and infinity now, i know what you're thinking where do the batteries go <laughs> well the batteries they don't go anywhere you know a quick look at the calibration uh, certificate or the calibration label they've put on the side so 28th of 11 28th of november 1976 was the last time uh, it was due a calibration uh, so yeah, quite old. I've no idea how they would have calibrated something like this. Uh, there are no place for the batteries, and that's because it has this little, this little crank handle there. Though that's a nice, that's a nice action there. That feels really nice and mechanical. What I'll do, I'll bring the um, little block of wood, a nice smooth block of wood, unlike this, this bench here, and that allows me to just kind of spin it while it's on the bench we'll get some cables and have a bit of a look so yeah like i said unfortunately i don't have the actual cables that come with it however on the side here you can see i'm going to put this cable there are these push button holes and as i push that down you see it's opening up a little piece of brass and it's the same on this side as well push that down it opens up again so although i don't have the actual original cables i can pretty much make one here just bit of a crock clip chop the crock clip off one end uh push this one down there get that one in nice and tight so we've got two cables connected there so if we generate that turn this round and get it really cranking the needle should come up to infinity because well they're not touching what a noise now if I connect these two crock clips together, like so, you can see that's all in one, just going to hold down on the thing and then start spinning, you'll see the needle should plummet down to zero. Yeah, 
Wow. Yep, obviously insulation has been compromised because it's basically a dead shot. Out of here, all the way around, back to there. And it's showing so on the analog needle. Now obviously as electricians, we're gonna be using test instruments to test various different things. I have here a trombone, or some people like to call it a heating element uh, for a, well, hot water immersion heating element. And this, I know for a fact, is not working at all. It's broken, I've tested it previously, and uh, yeah, it's not working at all. So what I'll do, connect one end up here to the earth terminal, the earth kind of thread there. We'll connect one end up, make sure I'll get all this on the actual camera. We'll connect one end up to the element itself here, and we'll spin. We're spinning and winning. You can see it's plummeting right down to zero there. Uh, and yeah, we'll undo that one. So we know that's pretty goosed over there. And we've got another one here, slightly bigger trombone, slightly bigger element, uh, but it's basically the same type of thing. And this is brand new, so it should be perfect. Now the end, I can, you can see it's there. In fact, I'm just gonna flip it round, that might be better. Flip it right round there. It's still not fitting all, all on the screen, but never mind. There, you get the the gist of it all. And if I connect these up again onto the earth terminal there on the on the thread, and connect the black up to any one of these, and go spinning, we should see the analog needle fly up the infinity scale because this one's working perfectly. It's brand new. It's out the box basically. <laughs> There we go. Now just for a tiny, tiny little test off, I thought we'll get the QTEC out because it uh, is calibrated and working and uh, certainly a lot more modern, a lot newer. Leave it on the insulation. Yeah, it's on insulation there. We're on 500. Let's bring that down to 200. Undo these crock clips from the Series 3. Keep these out of the way over here. And we'll just basically confirm our readings basically. Undo there, connect up there. Don't need to deal with any of this stuff. Uh, can you see the screen there? Yes, we can. Let's press the test button there. And then, yeah, it's obviously its version of infinity above 199.9. Um, so that's perfect there. We can even test it this way just to prove dead short. Sure. That's right, we should be getting. And yeah, so we've proved that one's working fine. We got another tester here? I think we have. We have the Biha Unitest Talaris 0100 Plus, 16th edition, no less. Like I said before, this was last seen on my previous video. We made a bit of a test off. Just leave that here and just knock that down to continuity just in case I press anything and something gets zapped. Uh, we'll flick this up to insulation resistance there, 250 volts. Again, this hasn't seen a calibration certificate for well over a decade. Uh, onto the earth, in fact, just for my OCD reason, we'll, we'll go, go with green. We'll click onto there, which is the terminal for the Elemento itself. Click the start button and we should be getting 199.9 which was literally what this had and literally exactly the same as what this had albeit these two are digital and this one is analog uh should we have a look at this dead thing yeah let's go on so i'll just knock that off a second unplug these things get this massive trombone out the way the huge big heating element and we will connect back up onto this one so again green onto the uh earth terminal the thread of the earth terminal and we'll go red onto the element itself back up to insulation resistance 250 volts start we should get a dead short there you go while it's there i thought i'd give the qtech a whirl as well so if we press down there again you can see we're getting a dead short 0, 0.00 and obviously that's because this element is completely goosed now that we've confirmed that all three testers are indeed speaking the same language, 
even though there are massive age gaps between them all i picked this one up in 2005 so that's about 17 years old i picked this one up in 2015 so that's about seven years old i actually picked this one up in 2015 as well i think or 2015 16 i've had it a few years anyway however it's obviously it's obviously far older than these two this goes to back the to the 60s well calibration certificate on the side the little sticker is 67 but i'm sure it's a lot older than that so way over 50 years old what i thought we'd do a bit of a clear out now move all this stuff out of the way uh get rid of the elements and stuff and um undo some screws and see what's inside Right, I'm going to quick look at the back. You can see there's uh, what looks like to be a screw or something in there in the corner and this corner, well, all four corners, to be honest. These orange things, incidentally, they are like rubber. Uh, they've been pushed into some kind of brass collar. Obviously, they're a bit dirty and they've been sat in various places. Uh, and they, they're like act as a bit of a grip to, to hold the thing down. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to do a bit of digging inside there and... Uh, Look at the state of these fingerprints all over. Yeah, grab a screwdriver and we'll uh, see what's going on in here. I've just done a little bit of digging there. You can see there is actually a brass slotted screw in the corner behind this. Now, there's something... I'm not quite sure what this material is that I'm digging out, by the way. It's black stuff, but... If you can see that it's focusing, it says PD. If uh, anyone can tell me what that means, I've no clue whatsoever. I'm sure I could go and find out myself, but I don't actually know what PD means. Uh, so, yeah, some kind of seal or something to say what it's been sealed with. Continue to do a bit of digging. I should actually be careful with this because I don't really want to scratch any of the, the casing. Oh, look at that one. That's not, that one came out nicely. Uh, yeah, we'll crack on with the rest. Right, you can see I've took all that crap out of there now, this black stuff. We've got access to all four of these little brass screws. Um, I've no idea what that black stuff is, or if it's like, you know, highly poisonous or anything. Let's, let's hope not, eh? But I'm going to have to shake all this off before we, before we continue. The little yellow cloth has now been shaken off all clean, straight into the heater actually, which fired it straight back into my face, so who knows what might happen to me or the heater. But yeah, anyway, clean now, and we can go ahead and have a look at this thing. So, basically... Let's undo these four brass screws. Look at the state of this screwdriver. That's again another thing I've had for about 20 years. Anyway. Alright, screws are all out. Let's lift the hood on this thing. You can see I've created a little bit more mess there, but never mind, hey. So if we pull this front up there, you can just see, oh, never mind, there's a little push button things dropped out. No problem, they just slide in and out of there. Let's shove that down a second, let's have a quick look at this. Is that a piece of uh, plastic or glass or something on there held in with um, some kind of brass and copper combination of uh, clip or something in there, maybe even some adhesive, that black stuff going around the side of it. You see it's nice and clean in there, absolutely spotless to be honest. Although it does look like there's a slight crack over here on this side, I'm not too sure about that. That's pretty much all that is. That's just the front cover. Inside in, I'm not going to strip this down completely to bits. If you head over, I mean, there's plenty of there's other videos and stuff uh, on YouTube and that. And if you head over to um, Richard's Radios, uh, www.richardsradios.co.uk, have a scroll on there. You can see inside these more in depth. People have stripped them down even more than this, uh, which they obviously will do. Um, and there's various different types and makes as well, which uh, obviously, you know, different different ages uh, as the technology is advanced and whatever. But in terms of this one, I'm not too sure if 
some of the soldering looks quite relatively new. I'm not, you can see there, that looks relatively new. Maybe it's had a repair at some point in its life. I'm not going to strip it down any further than this. Obviously we can click the crank handle and just get the generator going for you and just see those cogs moving. Obviously that's what it does. A little bit of grease and oil on there kind of thing. But yeah, the reason I don't want to strip this down any further is just, uh, <laughs> well, I don't want to damage it. It's actually working and I don't want to lose something, let some fire off somewhere or, you know, bend something, snap something. So what I'll do, uh, put the hood back on and leave it be. Screws all back in and the little crank handle back in. One quick last thing to show you comes with a little carry case and this is the thing it sits in and uh, it's um, I think it's designed so that it can be operated within the carry case itself you can obviously pull that the um, pull the crank handle out and spin it around you can still access these buttons here and they will open up the little brass springs there to get your cables in uh, this is a strap that holds the the crank down and then the whole thing has like a, a button push there I think there was a a bigger strap like a neck strap or something at some point that would go right around it I'm not too sure what this piece is here uh i'm also not too sure what this stuff is uh, 5g did they have 5g back in the 1960s i'm not too sure what that, any of that means or anything let me know if you know in the comments just open the back pocket oh, let's have a look in the bottom again and just see what there. there's something it's probably full of asbestos down there isn't it something just to protect it slightly on the base because i was thinking about how how it is protected in there. It's a robust leather, and you can see it's, it's quite tough and stuff. It's certainly lasted its many years in this. Um, let's shut the thing now. That's a nice case. AP5047. Not sure what that means. Now there's the Mega Insulation Tester Series 3. Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen something like this before, if you've come across it, or you've, you're looking at buying one. I know you can pick them up on eBay. They're actually ranging from about 10, 20 pounds, right up to about 300 pounds, depending on condition, obviously, age, whatever else and stuff. You know, obviously you get, some will come with a full carry kit and leads and all the rest of it. But yeah, that's the kind of price range you can pick them up on eBay for. Let me know what you think. I'm interested to see if and how rare these are or how, how common they are. Not, certainly not something I'm going to be carrying around with me in the van. I'm sure the first speed bump you come across, it's just going to smash to bits probably. Unless it's seriously protected. But it, yeah, I'll just leave it up here in the, in the little museum that I have. I'm going to leave some links in the description also to other videos and some other links and bits and pieces of information that I've found about this thing. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Happy New Year. Bye now.